Good afternoon. How are you doing? We're kind of guard a little bit there. We're good. We're going to move me so I don't get cropped at the top. Thank you. <laughs> Get that or I slide down. How's everybody doing this afternoon? It's good to see everybody out there. And we're having a great afternoon. Aren't we're having we, a great afternoon. We've been at the police. What was it called? Faith and. We were at the Faith and Blue Faith and Luncheon yeah. at the Roswell Police put on for the faith community. Yeah. Um, we love our Roswell Police. Mimosa Hall, a historic, I guess, a home, residence. Yeah, it was a home. It's very beautiful. The city has bought it, Goes and they're renovating it. Pre-Civil War. And using it for events. Of it. Yeah. So, so we were good. over there with the, with the police department and some other religious representatives in the in the city and oh, yes. it's an all faith kind of thing and uh, but it was good we had a good time I, I, I had a good time and so finding out what's going on but anyway we are here to um, really celebrate and talk about Eddie James being here and I want to talk about his faith and I'll talk about what we, we need to be about pressing in yes. I want to talk about uh, We've got a, pre, what is this, revival recap? Is that for Eddie? Yeah, oh, what great pictures. It was a great night wow. last night. Last awesome. night was the first night of four. So we had Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night. Um, he, wow. really, he really commented on our, um, our youth group and how on fire our youth group is. We're so proud of our, our young people. But that's happening um, the next three nights, 7 p.m., Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. Yeah, and and, so, uh, and then we've got a mission week coming up. That's in a couple of weeks. That's so. no, it's three weeks. Yeah, two three weeks. Uh, three to four. Can I just say? No, don't we say. We'll talk about our our personal no, life no, a little no, bit. No, 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 it's okay. We can say okay. about our personal life. Pastor Merrick is a little tired today, in case you notice. <laughs> He's a little tired. Not so, only are we doing all the stuff that we do at church, but you know, we have a home life too, and we have a home, and we are replacing the wood floors, or putting in wood floors, really. We had carpet on our first floor, and um, it's been a lot of work. He's, we, we have people coming in to put it in, but then the subfloor was subpar. For yeah, those of you who know. We've got the contractors. It's all good. It's all going to anyway, be Anyway, I'm just saying he's worked very hard. He okay. jumps in there with the other after, guys. After hours and the wee hours. After the hours and fixes our floor. So we Work a few hours before you come to work. It's good for the soul. <sighs> the top floor comes in tomorrow. So hallelujah. hallelujah. We'll have an open house. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so go ahead. Talk about... Eddie James and what, how great it was uh, last night. That, um, here's the deal about the Holy Spirit. Um, you can't fool the Holy Spirit. You cannot like schmooze him. You've got to be very serious about wanting him. He responds to the pressing in. And so really these four days are pressing in the presence of God. You say, well, why would I want to do that? I mean, so I get touched by God because God's presence changes you as uh, a work on the inside and the more that you press into God the fire burns in you and where Paul talked about the importance of pressing he said I press towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus uh, there's this thing <coughs> excuse me pressing is like going to services like this to say God I want more of you I want your presence 
And any James just lives his life pressing for God. And he talks about it when he's there. So there's the preaching and the teaching, but he doesn't just press for God. It's amazing. When you press for God, and God touches your heart. I remember just getting up there last night, just introduced him. I talked about his life and what he does to press into God. I felt the Spirit of God come on me. I just felt his presence. He just began to want to weep. I could just wept right there. Because his press in for God is also his press in for the hurting and the lost. And his stories are amazing. There's one young adult after another yeah. that is so hurting. They're at the end of their rope. But they hear through the grapevine or through a referral that if you could get to A.D. James, the power of God will touch you and you can be saved and set free. Because he has a ministry where he takes in yeah. uh, troubled teens. It's called the Dream Life. It's a center in Tennessee, outside of Cleveland or in Cleveland. And, um, you know, the testimony is one after another. And you forget the abuse people have. And this guy, brother named Audrey, who is now his personal assistant, um, raised in a foster home, abused by mom and dad, put in a foster home all his life, abused by the foster people, where it had, they'd even, what, what did they do to his hands, Audrey? They said when he was three years old, the babysitter poured boiling water on his hands and yeah. as a punishment. As a punishment, And yeah. so he's lived with that uh, disability. And the scarring. And the scarring his whole and life. So, um, and then how, because of that lifestyle, when he left, he was abused in the foster home. There's so many kids that get hurt by the powers of darkness. So my point is this. Um, Brother Eddie is always reaching out for the other broken one to bring him to him, to Christ. And one by one, you know, I, is that his song, Devil Lost Another One? Mm -hmm. Devil Lost Another One. Literally, that's his life. He's rescuing this one and rescuing that one. It challenges me. Like, what are we doing in a more, I don't know, real way, helping these people connect with a God that wants to help them, but they need the connection? So all I know is God's um, hands on him, and he's impacting my heart personally as a pastor. And we had a great intercession last night, and he said, we know, and one of his young preachers named Prince, he was originally from Jamaica, by the way, and he just preached about the whole aspect of, you know, uh, we have to have a house of, you, you've got to become, a, actually sang the song, we've got to become a house of prayer. You need to press in for That's prayer. That's also his song, uh, too. Yeah, he, every, every phenomenal song. <laughs> great song, all great the, songwriter. All the songs that Christians sing around the world, he wrote them. And um, it is like, you know, the, the more you press for Jesus, the more you press for helping people find him. That's what it is. And uh, so I'm deeply moved. I'm, a, I'm already moved. It's just one night. And I feel like we as a people of God must stay in the fire. We must stay pressing in. We just finished the holy days of fire and uh, days of holy fire. And I just tell you, it's, it's, it's kind of boiled up stuff in the church. Things that have been hidden have come to the surface in a variety of ways, in attitudes and this or that. And I just feel like God has um, been doing a work of cleansing in people's hearts. People come to me and say, Pastor, I was kind of like lackadaisical in my faith. I feel myself away from God. But I feel like I've had a, a what's it, like a, a reset. A renewal, renewal. reset. Mm -hmm. No, I'm going for God. I'm coming to prayer. I want Jesus. And that's what church is about. It must be a... Uh, uh, a furnace room, uh, that, that, that fire, another great song. Um, don't, uh, the, I don't want the fire on the altar of my heart to go out. Mm -hmm. I want to be called a house of prayer. I don't want that fire to go out. I want to, it's, that really is it in a nutshell mm -hmm. for us as, a, as living believers. God, I want this fire to go out of me, ever. I want it to burn. I want it to grow. I just feel His presence talking about it right now. I want the fire. And I believe as we as a church reach out for that fire, God will send the fire, but it's more. He'll give you as much as you ask him. And when you stop asking, he'll stop. But if we don't keep asking, then the world starts coming in and we start ourselves drifting back. 
So I'm just strongly encouraging you, come out, catch the fire in the worship, in the word that's been given. And he shared about Lot, how Abraham had 318 men that went after Lot in the book of Genesis because he was, he was in, living in Sodom and Gomorrah, which he shouldn't have been. And he was captured by these five kings. And how he went out there and attacked them, broke, broke them into three parties, attacked that night, and re, basically recaptured um, mm -hmm. Lot, rescued him. Miracle of God. And he talked about the little lots out there in that the world need rescuing. that need rescuing. So, um, and he equated the 318 to intercessors. Yes. You know, that will go and pray and pray people back in from darkness, pray them back in. I just, uh, he deals with, you know, so many of uh, what's dozens. Many of us would think, oh my goodness, you know, what can be done? You know, they've been in gangs and, um, but yet, in, this, the one young man who shared last night, I loved it because he, he was in, I don't know, he got ended up somewhere, and it was a uh, Christian woman, a Jewish Christian a believer, That's a Jewish believer. Audrey's testimony. Yeah, Audrey's testimony, who saw something in him and just, and just reached into the real Aubrey and said, God has something for you. And that's where his life turned around and she got him connected to Eddie James' ministry. And so just, you just see how that's just, that's just a normal person, just a normal Christian can reach into someone's life and share with them and bring them out. It is very challenging, challenging for us to be on the lookout for lots like that. And um, that's his message last night was um, look for the lots and be part of their rescue operation. Yeah, I gotta say is, I always think about our work as Christians on this earth, where Jesus looks at the hurting, he sees all the hurting, and he says, will you be my hand extended? Can I use you to meet the needs of so many all around about us? And it's like a tremendous challenge we live in, a world where it's so broken, and yet Jesus can fix stuff if we'll just connect with him. And there's no greater life than living your life to give it away to other people that they can connect with the love that Jesus has for them. And so I, I don't know, I'm pretty filled up from last night and I'm looking for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's gonna be glorious and uh, invite you to come yeah, out. Yeah, try to get to at least one of them. The good thing yeah. about these meetings, they're, they're not like your normal service. You can just come in and just go right into worship and just just what you need at the end of the week. It's just what you need on a Friday night, you know, really, to come out. It's and not just a worship leader. I, I told Pastor Eddie, Brother Eddie, I said, you're not just a worship leader. You're, there's something more about you. You're like a, a psalmist. You're a, ex, uh, you're a exhorter. You're a teacher. You're just, it's all a big <laughs> ball of Holy Ghost fire rolls into your church brings in the presence and changes your heart. And, and so we're looking forward to yeah, it. Yeah, well, what I love, he's kind of, he's like a band director, really, because he's got his young people that he's mentoring, and he just calls on them to come out and do this song yeah. or whatever, and he just yeah. stands off to the side and watches like a proud papa, yeah. you know, as they use their gift and, yes. you know, minister in the things of God. So, you know, it's, a, it's interesting because you know, we just did the Days of Holy Fire here at the church, and it was all on holiness and righteousness. And so this, this is really a nice cap for all of that. It's a it cap of the presence of God. But he also is talking about a lot of the same things, how when he brings these kids into their ministry, he's got to help them get, you know, walk in holiness and discard all of the darkness and the sins that the Bible says so easily beset us. And in that way, you know, their lives are turned around. In fact, I just wanted to share one scripture. I read this, um, I'm in Isaiah right now, and I thought this is, this is so great um, to kind of sum up the whole message of holiness. It says here, and obviously Isaiah here is talking about the highway in the end times, you know, in the millennial when they, you know, the, um, 
connects the countries, but it's also in the spirit. And he said, a highway shall be there, a road, and it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for others. And this is the, the scripture I just love. It says, whoever walks the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. Hmm. And I thought, God knows us so well. He's like, if you just stay on this highway that I made for you, just walk in the holiness of God, walk in what the commandment tells you to do, you can be a fool, he says. Even if <laughs> you're a it. fool, <laughs> you will make it if you will just do that, if you will just do what the Word of God says. And I thought, you know, he probably captures all of us, you know. As long as we do the Word, even though we're not the smartest person in the room, or we're not the sharpest knife in the drawer. We won't go astray if we do what God tells us to do. And so it is a, it is a quest really for the Christian life. I found, you know, we've been living a while. We've, we've got a few years on us. And I'm just realizing that you can't, you can't stop pressing. You have to just, yeah. you continually pull on the mercy of God pastor did a great um, message on Wednesday night on the grace of God and so encouraging, you know, how, how the grace of God is the power of God in us to do what we're not able to do. And most of the time, the older you get, the, the more you realize there's so little that you can do. You know, without the power of God, we, we're not going to make an impact. We're not going to make a change in our own lives or in the lives of others without the power of God operating in our lives. And so... so we're, we've been very excited about, um, you know, these days of revival that we've been in at the church and a lot of great stuff has been accomplished, many awesome testimonies, people's lives just refreshed and renewed. There's something so powerful yes. about getting refreshed. If you don't, you can start to drag, yes. you can start to droop in your Christian life yes. and we need that refreshing. So. I'm yeah. excited for what God has tonight. What, who's there? We have got, let's see. I see, I want what that, what was that TV show that say, I see so-and-so out there. Angela Davis is out there. Tracy Cicchetti is out there. We love you too, Tracy. Uh, we've got Dean Bennett, Eileen Thomas. Um, she, Eileen said, Pastor, you challenge me in your message. Joyce Clemens is out there. We love Joyce. Kevin Benton is in Florida watching. Oh, I got a call, Kevin. Hey, Kevin, reach out to you. I got to get you. <laughs> love you guys. Yeah, this is where we talk one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, another Floridian, Kathy Simon. Hi, Kathy. Kathy Simon. Kyle Fender. Hello, hello, Kyle. Kyle, Kyle is there last night. And, um, oh, Eileen says she's back in Georgia. Eileen is back in Georgia. George is the best place to be. But we love you guys. We love all of you that are there watching. And um, we're just going to have a nice short little show today and pray, pray out already. All right. Um, okay. We can go get ready for service tonight. So. That's very short. That's okay. We're good. We barely got going. We're good. <laughs> I can tell. Hi. Bye. <laughs> I don't know. When I'm on YouTube and I'm looking at stuff, I'm more likely to watch something that's 15 minutes than 30 minutes. Oh, is minutes. that right, honey? That's just me. Okay. That's a real good promotion <laughs> for this ministry. <laughs> We're just here to be no, real. No, We're no, here to be normal. Uh, I want to pray. <laughs> okay, honey. Okay. Let's okay. pray. Father, I just pray your blessing on each one watching today. For those who watch it further when it's stored. Lord, I thank you that you are worth pursuing. Yes, you are. That your love is so amazing. And I thank you, Lord, that we are to live a life of hotly pursuing after you. Yes, God. Thank you for all the lives being changed. Thank you for the challenge that Eddie James brings us to reach it to the to the lost and the, those that seem to be the least in the eyes of the world. But God, how you can break off all addictions and bondages and restore people to a place of peace rest and fruitfulness in you and so lord help us to keep stretching thank you for grace from heaven that which we receive from heaven the strength the wisdom the ability the power to walk out a life of the victory of christ in us thank you jesus you live in us by the power of the holy spirit 
Thank you, you've given us victory through the death, burial, resurrection of Christ. We stand in victory. We choose never to back down. We press to that which you have for us for our future. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for new open doors opportunity to reach this world for you. We ask these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 We love you much. We love you. See, hope to see you in the next couple nights. Okay. God bless.